Hi, welcome to this video. I will give you an introduction to episode mining today. We will learn what it is. And if you want to try episode mining on your data, you can check out the SPMF software. It has a source code and data sets that you can use easily for episode mining. Okay, so let me give you some introduction. Data mining is a popular topic in computer science. It is about finding patterns in the data that can help you to understand your data. Actually, many types of data we can analyze, like the graph, the relational database, the time series, or the sequences. In this presentation, I will focus on episode mining, that is, how to find patterns in a single and long sequence of events. It is a particular type of data okay, for episode mining. So let me first give you some definition. I will talk to you first about the event type. Okay, An event means something happened, right? So we we'll have a set we call E for the event types. Here I call them I1, I2 to IM. So here I will give you some example in this presentation. We'll have different event types. We call A, B, C, D as example. A means the event that some people buy the apple in a store. B is for buying the bread, C for cakes, and D for dates. Okay, so we have four event types that we can observe. So now let me give you other definition we need to explain what is episode mining. What we will call an event set. It is a set of events that have occurred at the same time. Okay, so we write like X and it is a subset of E. So let me give you just an example about this. Okay, A, B, it is an event set. It means you buy A and B together like apple and bread. Okay, so and we say it is an event set of size 2 because it contains two event uh, types. Another example is the set of event BCD. It is an event set that contains three events, buying the bread, the cake, and the dates. Okay, so it has the size of three. So now in episode mining, we will have some sequence of event, uh, an event sequence. What it will be? It will be a list of event pairs like this okay s is a sequence and we have some event pairs an event pair will be a set of events like apple and cake and a time like t1 means uh, the people buy the apple and cake at time one then we have another pair of uh, event pair with another set of events and a timestamp again and so on so for example, here we have an example. I have, uh, you can see at the bottom, and we have also a picture. And we have a sequence, AC at time 1. That means apple and cake. Then A, apple at time 2. Okay. Apple and bread at time 3. Apple at time 6. Apple and bread at time 7, and so on. So this is how we represent a sequence of event. It could be for shopping, but it could be also for many other things, like maybe the, some activities you do and so on. So the event sequence, as I introduce, can model many different types of data, like some sequence of alarms in a computer system, the cloud data, network data, the malicious attacks, the customer transactions, and so on. So now, if we have the data like this, the event sequence, what is episode mining? Episode mining is a task where we have a sequence of events, as I show you here, and we want to find some subsequence of events that appear many times. Okay. 
So we call this the frequent episode. So intuitively, if you look at this picture, you can see that some things are repeating. This is what we want to find. Like, for example, A um, followed by B. Okay, A followed by B, A followed by B, A followed by B, and so on. It appears several times. So, this is the goal. What we want to find some subsequence of events that will appear many times in the sequence of events that we have. So, here I have one example. We see apple, apple appear many times in this sequence, like five times. Another example is a cake followed by bread. Okay, it also appears uh, twice in the sequence. So now we need to give a more clear definition about this. Okay, I just introduced this using some example. I need to explain more clearly what is an episode. And how do we count the support? That means how many times an episode appears in an event sequence. Okay, so let's look at this together. So first, about what is an episode? I need to say that there are different types of episode. What we call a composite episode, it will be a list of event sets, some sets of events that will be ordered by time. So here we have a formal definition. We have an episode, composite episode, alpha. It contains several event sets. We call x1, x2, xp, okay. And the order like x1, x2, xp is the order of the time, actually, okay. So for example, here we have alpha equal a followed by a b followed by c. It means a was followed by buying apple and bread together and then buying the cake. Okay, so apple followed by apple and bread and then by the cake. Now there's another type of episode we can talk about. It's called the parallel episode. A parallel episode means an episode that contains a single event set and all the events appear at the same time. So we can write like this. Alpha is a set of events that appear together. So for example, here I have the episode, the parallel episode, AB together, means that some people buy apple and bread together at the same time. Also, we have another type of episode. It's called the serial episode. It means a list of event sets, but each event set must have a single event. Okay, so we cannot have two events at the same time. So here I have an example. A followed by A followed by C. So actually it should be A followed by B followed by C, okay? A followed by bread followed by cake. So here each event is followed by the other one and no events are at the same time. So this is a serial episode, okay? No event can be at the same time. So those are the three main types of episodes we see in the papers, the research papers. Now, if we want to find the episode appear many times, we need to define how to count how many times the episode appears. So there are different ways or functions that we can use to count the support, how many times the episode appears. Like the windows base frequency the head support, the total frequency, and so on, okay? They are used by different algorithm. So, and all these way of counting will give you different result because uh, or they can give you the same, but sometimes they will not give the same result. So here I will not explain all of them, okay? I will explain one of them to give you the main idea. I will explain the head support. 
because it is uh, popular and used in several algorithms. So to explain how to count the episode with the head support, I need to first give you some definitions. We need to define what is an occurrence of an episode. An occurrence means the episode appear one time, okay, in the sequence. We call this an occurrence. So here I will give you the formal definition and then I will explain with an example to make this as clear as possible. So let's say we have an episode uh, x1, x2 to xp contains some even set. It is a composite episode, okay? Sequence of even set x1, x2 to xp. And then we have a sequence as I defined before. And we say that the occurrence of the episode will appear in some time interval from a timestamp for starting and ending. Okay, so for example, the episode appear between the time 1 to 5 or 2 to 8 and so on. Okay, so we say that the episode has an occurrence in the sequence between in this time interval if it follows the definition, the condition below. Okay. So the condition below is that the first even set of the episode X1 must be included in some uh, even set from the sequence. Then the second even set of the episode must also be included in some even set of the sequence. And the last one, up to the last one, all of them must appear in the sequence. That's what it means, okay? And here we have some other condition. It just means that all these even sets from the episode must appear in the sequence, but in the same order, okay? We need to follow the order. So if it is apple before bread before cake, they must appear in the sequence in exactly the same order. And the first even set must appear at the time start. And the last one must be at the time for the end of the interval. Okay, so maybe not so easy to understand, okay? But if you think about this a little bit, it makes sense, okay? So now let me show you the examples uh, to explain more clearly about this. So here we'll take an example. It is the episode a followed by a b okay it has two even sets the even set a apple and another even set apple and bread okay so it means a followed by a b so if we want to find the occurrence of this episode uh, we can check the sequence in our example and we could find that a followed by a b has one occurrence in the time interval 1 to 3, from time 1 to 3, like here. We see A appear at time 1, and after this, okay, it must be after the time 1, but until the time 3, we need to find A, B. So here we have A and A, B after. And A is at time 1, and A, B is at time 3. So this is 1 to the interval 1 to 3 is an occurrence of this episode okay so I think it's okay right not so easy to not so hard to understand here I have another example this episode a followed by a b also appears in the interval 1 to 7 it has an occurrence in the time interval 1 to 7 because we have a and followed by a b and it starts at the time 1 and it ends at the time 7. Also, A followed by AB has many other occurrences, maybe in this sequence, like in the interval 2 to 3. Okay, A followed by AB again. Also, we have A followed by AB from time 2 to 7. So, this is another occurrence of this episode. We have also A followed by AB from time 3 to 7 and also from 
6 to 7, in the time interval 6 to 7. So, we can look at the sequence to find all the occurrence of an episode like this, alpha A followed by AB. And then, by doing this, we can count how many times the episode appears in the sequence. So, well, I want to introduce some other important definition. So, if we have the episode alpha, the set of all the occurrences of alpha, we will call this the occurrence set. Okay, the occurrence set of alpha. So, here in my example, the occurrence set of alpha is A followed by AB will be all the time interval where we have found the episode alpha A followed by AB as I explained just before. Okay, So this is how we calculate the set of occurrence of an episode or alpha. Now, what I wanted to define is the head support. The head support will be one way to count how many times an episode appears in a sequence. So let me give you the definition and then I will explain the example. The head support of an episode alpha in a sequence will be the number of distinct start time in the set of occurrence of this episode. So we need to find the set of occurrence of the episode alpha, like in this example, the set of occurrence of A followed by AB is what you see here. Okay. Then we need to count how many different start time in these intervals. Okay. So the different start times we have one, okay, two, and we have three and six. So this is the different start times that we have for this episode, for its occurrences. So there are four different start times, 1, 2, 3, and 6. So we say the head support of alpha will be 4. And we write this like this. Okay, the support of alpha is 4. So this is how we count the head support of an episode. Now, this is interesting to count the head support. To know how many times an episode appears in a sequence. But it is possible that some occurrence appear in some time interval that are too big, okay, that span a very long period of time. And this is not something we want. So because of this, we can also introduce a constraint. We call the window, the window's length, okay. The idea is, we don't want to find the occurrence that appear in some time interval that is too long. So here, for this episode, here I set a window's length, okay? I don't want to find the episode for the time interval that have a length that will be a duration, I mean, that will uh, lasts for more than six time units okay so for example here in the set of occurrence we have one occurrence from time one to seven this is a duration of seven it is more than six okay so we'll not count this occurrence so this is the idea about the head support with a window and if we remove this in time interval, this occurrence 1 to 7, the result will be the same in this example, actually. Now, if we change the constraint, the window's length to 2, now we have something different. We need to remove all the time interval that have a duration of uh, more than 2. Okay, so we calculate this as uh, the duration as 3 minus 1, okay? So it gives you 2. So at 2 or more, we don't want to keep this in this example. That's what it means, okay? So the first time interval, the second one, we, we remove this one, this one, and we keep only 2 to 3 and 6 to 7. 
So now we have only two different start time, two and six, and the head support will become two. Okay. So depending on the application, how you want to use episode many, you can change the windows length. Okay. And you will get different results. So here A followed by B, we say it appears twice because the windows is set to two. But before, if we set to six the windows, then the support will be four instead. Okay, so it depends what we want to do. We may choose a smaller window or a bigger window. So now, having explained many definitions, I can now explain to you what is frequent episode mining, give you the full definition. So, what it is? As input, we have an event sequence, a sequence of event, as I explained before, and we need to set two parameters, the windows length, okay, and another parameter we call the minimum support or the minimum frequency. So that means we want to use a window with a duration of at most two, and the minimum support means we want to find the episode appear at least twice in this event sequence. So the result will be all the frequent episodes, all the episodes that have a support more or at least equal to the minimum support. Here it is to appear at least twice. Okay. So the result in my example for the windows of two and the episode appear at least twice will be what you see in the table here. Like apple and bread together appear twice. The support is two. Apple followed by bread appear twice. So these two episodes are different. Okay, This is A and B at the same time. This is A followed by B. We have also A followed by AB, A followed by A, and so on. Okay, So this is the result we want to find in episode manning with the head support. So how to find the frequent episode if we want to solve this problem? One challenge is that there's a very large number of possible episodes. Uh, if we have only four items like A, B, C, D, we have A, we have B, we have C, D, a, B, another episode, A, C, A, D. All of these are episodes. And then we can have A, B, C, D, A followed by A, A followed by B, A followed by C, A followed by D, A followed by A followed by A, B, and so on. Okay. So here should not be like this. Okay. It should be A followed by C. Here I shall remove this actually. So there are, what I want to say is that there are so many combinations of A, B, C, D we can consider if we want to find the frequent episode. And if we look at all the possibilities, there will be a lot. Okay. Generally, if a sequence will have n events, there could be 2 to the power of n minus 1 different episodes. But if we want to find the result quickly, we don't want to look at all the possibilities to find the solution. So we need some efficient algorithm that will not look at all these combinations and we still find all the frequent episodes. So to solve the problem of frequent episode mining, there are different algorithms like WinePy, MinePy, MA, MinPy, TKE. AFEM and max FEM. Okay, so all these different algorithms and others, they will use a different approach to find the episode, like the breadth first search or the depth first search. But not only this, they will also use different definition for the support, like the Windows based support or the occurrence based frequency and so on. So different algorithm, they will not necessarily use the same definition and maybe they will give different result. But some algorithm will give you the same result if they use the same definition. So, and some algorithms 
can only analyze the simple sequence. The simple sequence is a sequence where we don't have the simultaneous events. So we only have the events one before the other, like A followed by B followed by C. But we don't have A, B together at the same time. And other algorithm, they can analyze the complex sequence. That means a sequence where some event can appear at the same time, like A, B, C, in the same event set, together, okay? Apple, bread, and cake, we buy them together, followed by B and C together, followed by C. So, some algorithms are for the simple sequence and other for the complex sequence to process these different types of sequences. Okay, so I have introduced the main problem of episode mining. Now I will explain one algorithm that is called EMMA. It is a popular algorithm for episode mining. So the EMMA algorithm was proposed by Huang and R in 2008. What is special about this algorithm? It was the first algorithm to use the head support. It is an efficient algorithm and it does what we call depth first search to search and find only the frequent episode. And it uses also a vertical data structure. Uh, don't worry if you don't know what it is. Okay, I will explain step by step. And to explain to you the MR algorithm, we will use an example. Okay, we'll see how it works step by step. Then you will understand. So here, let's take an example. We have here an event sequence. It is the same sequence I have shown to you before. And for my example, we will set the same parameters, the windows length to 2 and the minimum support to 2. Now, what we want to find will be the frequent episode. So, the first step of the MR algorithm will be to read the sequence, to scan the sequence, to count how many times each event type appears. So here we have A appear five times because we have five A's, B appear three times, C appear twice, and D appears once. Okay, so this is the support of the episodes with only one event type, like just A, just B, just C, just D. Okay, so this is the first step. We need to find this. Okay, now the second step will be to keep only the frequent events. So actually, D appear only once, only one time. But in our problem, we wanted to find the episode appear at least twice. So we need to remove D, okay. So now we have only ABC left. So why we remove D? It is because it is infrequent. But also, if D appear only once, it will not be possible to find D in any frequent e e episode. So really, we don't need to keep D anymore. Okay, so next. After this, we need to create a special data structure we call the location list. We need to build this for each frequent event. So let me explain to you how it works. The location list of an event like A will be the position where A appear in the sequence, okay? So here, the location list of A is the position where A appear. At time 1, we have A. Time 2, we have A. Time 3, we have A. Time 6, and time 7, okay? So the location list is the list of timestamps where A appears. The same for B, the same for C, okay? So, to build this location list, we need to read the sequence only one time. And we do this only for the frequent event. We don't do this for D, okay? Because we don't need D, as I said. And one thing is interesting about the location list is that the size of the location list will give you the support. So, here in the location list of A, you have five uh, numbers, 
so that means the support of A is 5. A appears 5 times, right? B as a location list with 3 uh, timestamps means the support of B is 3, and so on. So this is the step 3. Okay, so this is what I explained. Now, the step number 4 will be to find the frequent parallel episode. Parallel episode means uh, one or more events appear at the same time together. Okay, so now from the frequent events, the frequent episode with one event, we want to find all the parallel episodes and also their location list. And we will keep only the parallel episodes that are frequent. So let's see how does it work. So what we will do, first we take all the frequent events and we can observe that they are the frequent parallel episode. Even they have only one event, all of them are frequent. They appear at least twice, okay, in my example. Now, what about like more than one event, like AB together or AC or ABC and so on, okay? So now we need to create more parallel episode to find only the frequent one, okay? So we'll try a different combination, like A with B, A with C, A with B with C, A, B, C, and so on. So how to do this, okay? So first, we will take A with B. We combine A with B to try to make A, B. So A appear in the, we take the location list of A, the location list of B, and we'll do the intersection to get the location list of AB. So if you look carefully, B appear in 379 and A in 12367. What is the intersection of this? It is 37. Okay. We don't even need to look at the sequence and we can know that AB appear together at the time 3 and 7 by doing the intersection. So, because of this, you can find the support. The support will be 2, because there are 2 timestamps, okay? So this is a very efficient way to find how many times we have a B. We don't even need to look at the original sequence to find this, okay? So, a B will be frequent because it appears at least twice. Now we need to continue. How about A and C together? So we'll try the other combination. A and C are combined to make A with C. So again, we do the intersection of the location list of C and A. And what is the intersection? What do you think? It is 1, okay, because only 1 is in common. And the support will be 1 because there's only one timestamp. So A and C together is not frequent because it is less than the minimum support. So this is not a frequent parallel episode. We need to remove it. Now we continue. We'll try to combine uh, B with C, for example. So B with C, we do the intersection of the location list of C and B. And the result is the location list of BC. It is empty. So BC never appear together. The support is zero. So BC is infrequent. We can just remove it. Now, next, we'll try ABC. Okay. So we take AB and we try to combine with C to get ABC. So we do the intersection of the location list, it is empty, so the support of ABC is zero. So because of this, ABC is infrequent and we don't need to keep it actually. Okay. So this is the end of this step. Okay. So we combine A with B, A with C and so on to find the different combinations and we find the result is the frequent parallel episode. We have all of them now. Okay, so now the step number five. We have the frequent parallel episode. So we'll give some identifier 
to each parallel episode, like one, two, three, four. The first episode, we call it one. The second one, we call it two. Then three, and then four. This is really simple, right? So, why we do this? Because after that, we will want to find the composite episode, like A followed by B, A followed by B followed by C, and so on. But first, before we do this, we need to give the identifier to the parallel episode in the Emma algorithm. Okay, this is what we do. So then we take the input sequence we had before and we need to encode it again using this ID. Okay. So how does it look like? Okay, if you take the first event set A and C together at time one. A and C together at time 1 means the first episode we have A. So it is number 1. We put 1, number 1, the ID. And in A C together, we also have the episode C, the episode number 3. So we put at time 1, there's the episode 1 and 3. Now at time 2, we have only the episode number 1, A. So we will encode this like this. Episode number one appear at the time two. Now at time three we have AB. AB is uh, the episode one A, the episode B number two, and the episode AB number four. So we have episode one, two, and four at time three and so on. So this is one step of the MR algorithm, which is to encode the sequence, re-encode the sequence using the IDs of the parallel episode. The result is what you can see here at the bottom. So, and by this process, I need to also mention that we remove the infrequent event like D, okay? As we know before, D is not frequent, appear only once. So, at the same time, we need to remove D from the sequence when we re-encode also. And at the same time as we re-encode the sequence, we will create some new data structure for each parallel episode. It is called the bound list. Okay. So, the bound list, what it will be? It will be some uh, time interval where the episode appears. So, the bound list of episode A will indicate the list of time interval where A appear in the input sequence. So, A appear at from time 1 to 1, 2 to 2, 3 to 3, 6 to 6, and 7 to 7. Because A is the episode number 1, appear at time 1, time 2, time 3, time 6, and time 7, as you can see. Okay. So we do the same for all the other parallel episodes. We have the bound list like this, okay, the time interval where these episodes have some occurrences where they appear. Now, after this, we have our parallel episode with, with their bound list, and we will try to combine them to find the frequent composite episode like A followed by AB and so on. So how to do this? The Emma algorithm will recursively append the parallel episode one to the other to try to make the larger episode like A with AB will do A followed by AB. Then we can add another parallel episode to make A followed by AB followed by C for example and so on. So this process of appending the parallel episode together to make the composite episode, we call this the serial extension. So don't worry, I will explain this to you with some example also. So here we have the parallel episode on top, and at the bottom we will find the composite episode. Okay. The composite episode, of course, include all the parallel episodes. The parallel episodes are also the composite episode. So here I just copy them from the table of parallel episode to the table of composite episode. Now what we will do, we'll take the parallel episode 
and we'll try to append them at the end of the composite episode to find the larger composite episode. We'll do this recursively. So, first, we take the parallel episode A. We'll try to combine with the composite episode A to find the uh, composite episode A followed by A. Okay. So, when we do this, we need to combine the bound list of A with the bound list of A. Okay. So, how we do this? Okay. We want to find A followed by A. So, here, if we have A at time 1, it might be followed by A, but at time 2. Okay. So, it, A followed by A appear from time 1 to 2. This is how we calculate. Okay. And also, we have A at time 2. And after that, we have another A at time 3. So, from 2 to 3, we have A followed by A. Uh, one thing I need to say, we use the windows length of 2, okay? So, we'll not find the A followed by A, like 2 to 6, because the duration is too long, okay? We only want to find the duration at most 2, okay? So, we will find also 6 to 7, we have A followed by A, and so on. So, this is the occurrences of A followed by A. And the number of entry in the bound list of A followed by A is a 3. So the support of A followed by A is a 3. And 3, it is at least 2, more than 2, the minimum support. So 3 is frequent. So this is a frequent composite episode. Now we need to continue. We'll try to combine other episodes, like A, we'll try to combine now with B. We did A with A, we, now we'll do A followed by B, okay, A followed by B, the new composite episode. So again, we'll combine the bound list to see, the find the occurrence of A followed by B. So, A appear at time 1 and B appear at time 3. But the duration will be too long, so it does not work. We have A at time 2 and B at time 3. This is okay. Okay, so two uh, two, uh, from 2 to 3, we have A followed by B. Now, after this, we also have A at time 3, A at time 6, and uh, B at time 7. So this is also okay for the Windows land. So we have two occurrences we can find, okay, after this. A followed by B from time 2 to 3 and 6 to 7. The support is 2 and A followed by B is a frequent composite episode. Now we can continue this like A followed by C, for example, okay. So we do the same process and we find that A followed by C appear only from uh, the time in the time interval 7 to 8. So the support is 1 and A followed by C is infrequent. So it is not a frequent episode. We can remove it. Now we can try some other things like A followed by AB. Okay. We try to combine the composite episode A and we try to append AB after. Like A followed by AB. So, A followed by AB, A appear at time 1, AB at time 3. This is uh, too far apart. The duration is too long for the Windows land. 2 followed by 3, it is okay. So, we add 2 from 2 to 3. And then 3 to 7 is too long, the duration. 6 to 7 is okay. So, we have A followed by AB also from time 6 to 7. So that is R. So the support of A followed by B, the composite episode is 2, and it is a frequent episode. So this is the result. And of course, we need to continue this to try the different other combinations. 
We try B, B, A, B, 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 C, B, A, B, A, A, and so on. Okay. And if some combination has a support of zero, like uh, maybe like uh, A, 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 for example, then we don't need to check A, 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 and so on, or A, 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 and so on. Okay. So recursively, we try to make the larger episode but if one episode is not frequent we don't need to continue to extend it okay to add more events so then we'll not look at all the combinations so the result will be like this in the end this is all the frequent composite episode it includes the parallel episode and also the composite episode that we find with the support value. This is the result of Emma. So now, if we want to talk more about Emma, Emma will find the parallel episode and then combine them to make the composite episode. This is how it works, as I explained before. And Emma will not look at all the possibility. It will reduce the search space because it will not extend the episodes that are infrequent, like the episode D, for example. It is not frequent, so we ignore it, everything with D. And also the composite episode, if some of them are infrequent, Emma will not extend them. So Emma will be quite fast, and uh, generally it is a good algorithm. There is also an improved version called AFEM that has some other optimization and will be faster than Emma. Okay, so now I want to talk to you about some other topic in episode mining to give you some overview. Another topic is to find the maximal episode. The idea is if you want to find the frequent episode like with Emma or AFEM, Maybe you find too many episodes. There's a lot, a lot of them. So maybe you want to find only the maximal episode, the one that are the largest. So there's a paper about an algorithm called Max FEM that is based on Emma. It is an extension of Emma to find only the maximal frequent episodes. So I will explain this uh, quickly. So, one limitation about frequent episode mining is that we can find millions of frequent episodes. For each frequent episode, all the sub-episodes generally will also be frequent. For example, if we have milk followed by bread followed by orange, and it is frequent, appear at least twice, for example, then milk followed by bread will also be frequent, maybe, milk followed by orange, bread followed by orange, milk, bread and orange. So there will be a lot of redundancy, okay? You have an episode that is frequent and then many many of its sub-episodes will also be frequent. So one solution to this problem, if we want to find uh, less episode and keep most of the information about this, the frequent episode. It is, the solution is to find the maximal episode. We don't want to find all of them, but only the largest one, the one that contains the most events. So we we'll say that a frequent episode alpha will be maximal if it is not included in another frequent episode. So for example, if you have the episode AB, it will not be maximal if you have another episode that is bigger, like ABC, okay? So we want to find only the largest episode. So the benefit will be we find a lot less episode and we keep most of the information. And we want to do this for the general case to find the maximal episode in the complex sequence, the sequence where the events might be uh, simultaneous. So how to do? Okay, I will explain very simply with an example. Here we have the example we saw before. 
and we add the parameter we set before like the windows land the minimum support they are set to two and we have all the frequent episodes we could find okay now if we want to find only the maximal episode there are only two i put here in yellow color a followed by a b and c why they are maximal because they are not included in another episode that is frequent so for example a b is not maximal because a b together are included in a followed by a b a followed by b is not frequent also because it is included in a followed by a b a followed by a is not maximal because it is included in a followed by a b and a followed by a b is maximal because there are no other frequent episodes with A followed by AB. C also is maximal because there are no other frequent episodes that have C inside. So, if we find only the maximal episode, we will find only two episodes instead of uh, seven episodes you can see here. Okay, So it will reduce the number of episodes that you will find in your data and maybe it will be more appropriate for your application, for what you want to do. So you will not find millions of episodes, but you will find only the maximal ones. So there is one algorithm for this problem called the max FEM, for example. Max FEM means maximal frequent episode mining. It will find the maximal frequent episode and it is based on the MR algorithm that I have explained. So it works more or less in the same way, but the difference will be it will use some techniques to keep only the maximal episodes, and also it will use some optimization to be faster. Okay. So the process will be like this, similar to MR. The max FEM algorithm we count the support of all the event, keep only the frequent event, make the location list of each frequent event, and then find the parallel episode, the frequent parallel episode, re-encode the input sequence and, and create the bound list, and then combine the parallel episode to find the composite episode. So all of this, they are the main step, the same step as MR. But the step number six will be modified to keep only the maximal episode. This is the key difference between max FEM and MR. So in the step six, when we find the frequent composite episode, the difference will be like this. When we search for episode, if we find some, uh, we'll keep set W that uh, store the episode that are the maximal until now. Okay, so max FEM will try to, to make the composite episode and it will keep a set W to store uh, at all time all the maximal episode that it has found until now. And when we find a new episode alpha, the max FEM algorithm will do two things. Okay, the first one is the sub episode checking. If you find alpha and it is included in another episode beta in W, then alpha will not be added to W because alpha is not maximal. Okay, you find an episode alpha, but alpha is included in an episode beta that is bigger already in W. So you don't need to keep alpha, it's not maximal. And the second thing, the max FEM algorithm, when you find an episode alpha, will be super episode checking. If an episode beta in W is included in alpha, it means that beta is not maximal anymore. So we need to keep alpha, but we need to remove beta from the current episode that we have found that are maximal. So by doing this uh, modification, we can find only the maximal episodes when the algorithm will end.
Now the max FEM algorithm we also use many optimization to make the algorithm faster uh, to find the maximal episode. So this is the first optimization. Uh, I will not explain now because it is a little bit complex but if you are interested you can read the paper. There are also two other optimization also in the algorithm okay to make it faster to find the maximal episodes. So in the paper about max FEM, uh, there are some experiments that are done on different data sets to compare the algorithm max FEM with Emma. Emma find all the frequent episodes and max FEM find only the maximal episode. And in this experiment, there are different values for the Windows land and the minimum support is also changed and we use the time limit of 300 seconds to compare the algorithm that means they cannot run for more than 300 seconds actually okay 300 seconds so here in the paper there are some results like this okay we have different version of Emma Emma with the windows uh, length of 5 10 and 15 and max FEM with windows length of 5, 10, and 15. And here we have the two data set, uh, Crosarac and Retail. And what we can see here is the time. Okay, when we change the minimum support, the time of this algorithm will increase for both data set. And on the right, you have the pattern count, the number of patterns that we find okay so here what we can see on the left about the time we can see that max fem is faster than emma so for example max fem with windows of 5 is faster than emma with a windows of 5 and the same for the windows of 10 or the windows of 15 okay and so on in general, also, when we increase the window, it will take more time than if we have the smaller window. This is another observation. And for the number of patterns, we can see that the number of maximal patterns found by max FEM is less than the number of patterns found by Emma, because max FEM keep only the maximal pattern. This is true for the Windows 5, the Windows 10, or the Windows of 15, the Windows land. Okay, it's the same for the other data set. So the idea here is that finding the maximal episode can be faster and also you can find less patterns when you find the maximal episode using max FEM. So this is interesting. So, the conclusion about the maximal episode, it is why we do this. It is one way to reduce the number of episodes that are presented to the user. And max FEM is one algorithm to find the maximal episode in a complex sequence and using the head support. There is also another version of max FEM to find all the frequent episodes. It is called AFEM. It is also faster than Emma. And there exist also many other algorithms for episode mining beside this. Okay, this is just some algorithm that I find interesting. Uh, also, another topic is about the episode rule mining. There are many papers about finding rules between different episodes. So, episode rule mining is another variation of frequent episode mining where the goal will be to find some rules. If we find some episode like AB, then it will be followed by another episode like AC and so on. Okay, so let me explain to you this other topic of episode rule mining. If you apply the algorithm like MR, TKE, or MinPy and so on to find the frequent episode, you will find that these episodes appear many times. But this is not so useful if you want to do prediction. Like for example, if the customer by AB 
I want to predict what they will buy next. Okay, so one way to the, to find patterns that are more useful for prediction will be to combine the episode to make some rules that we'll call the episode rules. So let me explain this quickly. The basic idea in episode rule mining will be to find the rules. And the rules will be have the form like this. If you have some episode alpha, then it will be followed by an other episode beta. So we try to combine these frequent episodes to make the rules like this, like alpha with beta. An example will be like this. If you buy bread, then you will buy milk and noodles. Bread is an episode and milk and noodle is another episode. And then we'll count how many times it appears, like 100 times the support. But also we'll have something new called the confidence. The confidence means like the conditional probability. Okay, It means the percentage, the percentage of time that when we buy bread, we'll have the milk noodles after. So 75% of the time, when the people buy bread, they will also buy the milk with noodle after. So this is the meaning of the confidence. And using the episode rule with the confidence, now you can do the prediction. If you know the people buy bread, you know 75% of the time, based on the confidence, they will buy the milk and noodles. So this is interesting to understand more about the data and maybe also to do prediction. Okay, so this is another topic about the episode mining, finding the episode rule. Now briefly, I would like to explain to you another topic we call uh, the top K frequent episode mining to find the top k most frequent episodes in a sequence. Okay, So let me explain the idea about this. In frequent episode mining, as I explained before, the user needs to set a parameter called the minimum support or min sub. But a big problem about episode mining is how to set the threshold. Should I set to 2 or to 3 or to 10 or to 100? Okay. Usually, if you are the user and you have some data, you don't know how to set the threshold. You need to set it by trial and error. Try many times and see how many patterns you find. But if you set the parameter too low, then you find nothing, no frequent episode. And if you set it too high, uh, maybe you find millions of episodes and the runtime and memory usage will greatly increase. Okay, so actually it's not correct, okay? If you set too high, you will find no frequent episode. And if you set it too low, you will find millions of episodes. That's the meaning, okay? So one solution to solve this problem is to find the top key most frequent patterns. That means instead of using the minimum support, the user will use some algorithm like TKE that will let you set the number of patterns you want to find, the number of episodes. So for example, you can say, I want to find the top three most frequent episodes. I don't want to use the minimum support. So using the TKE algorithm, you can say, I want to find three episodes and the algorithm will give you the top three most frequent. So that will be more easy to use. Okay, You don't need to think about how to set the minimum support. Should I set it to 2 or 3 or 4? You just need to think how many episodes you want, like k equal 3, or you can say k equal 10, and the algorithm will give you 3 or 10 episodes. So the TKA algorithm can do this. So here I have one example. Uh, we have a sequence of events and we set the windows land to 2 and k to 3 and this will be the result the top three episode that we find in the database okay a a a and b 
So there's one algorithm for this called the TKE algorithm uh, based on Emma and it will find the top K a most frequent episode. It is very similar to Emma. Uh, the main idea about this algorithm will be to start to search using an internal minimum support set to one. Okay. And then it will search, search and search for frequent episodes. And as soon as it finds K episodes, it will try to increase the minimum support to reduce the search space. And also it will use many optimizations to make the search more quick. Okay. So here I will not explain the details about the algorithm, but I just wanted to talk to you about this problem in episode mining. It is another problem that I think is very useful related to finding the frequent episodes. Another topic uh, in episode mining is to find the high utility episodes. So let me give you a brief overview about this. There are many papers about this. Okay. So what is the problem of high utility episode mining? High utility means you want to find the episodes in your data that have the high utility, means high importance. So for example, utility could mean the money. If we think about shopping, we want to find the episode that make a lot of money. So here we have a sequence of event and we have some event type like apple, bread, cake and dates. And we'll have a table to indicate the profit, like the apple is a $2, the bread is $1, the cake $3, the dates $2. And then in this problem, we want to find the high utility episode, the episode that make a lot of money. So the utility is at least more than some minimum amount of money and the duration must be smaller than some maximum duration. So here, quickly, if I set the minimum utility to 15, it means I want to find what the people buy together uh, that make at least $15. And the duration should not be more than three time unit. It could be like three days and so on. So this is the result. We find, for example, BC followed by AC followed by D as the utility, the money, of the total amount of money is a 15 in the example okay and so on so this is just a very quick explanation if you are interested by this you can have a look at the paper and this problem has also many applications like to find uh, what the people buy that make the most money so in conclusion uh, today I have talk to you about episode mining I have tried to give you some overview first I have explained what is frequent episode mining I have explained one algorithm called Emma that is easy to understand and popular then I have talked to you about some other variation like the maximal episode the episode rules the top key episode and the high utility episode and I hope this gives you a good overview of episode mining. If you want to try this algorithm, you can check out the SPMF software. It is a free open source uh, data mining software. It has the code, the data set you can use in your research or to analyze your data. And it has many episode mining algorithms that you can try. Okay. So thank you for watching this video. Bye.